My dad and my sister were always dragging home dogs. I mean, we must have it from the time I was. I can remember all through my life when, when we lived on the east side there at 7-Eleven East Street. We must have had a dozen dogs. I was 15 when we left there, and I don't, we had one dog after that. The one dog we got after that was, was Tack, who I, we had over on the, on the west side, and that was a good dog. And, the, and after I joined the Navy, the, the, the neighbors finally took that dog because my mom died at that time, and my dad was away for a while. After my mom died, my dad came with Millard and Nan for a while, for about a month. And uh, anyhow, they were always dragging home this bunch of dogs. One time I remember we had a dog, I remember his name was Skipper. He was a black cocker spaniel, and we had it was in the spring, and we had one of these downpours of rain, and the gutters got all plugged up. And every time it rained, of course, our basement would fill up and had a foot of water in it. And, and my mother's books all were stored down there in cardboard, and they were all soaked and, and crapped up. Anyhow, the whole street was flooded, all the way up to our, almost to our steps. And here this dog comes swimming down the street. And a big, long rope or um, something tied on his neck. And he was caught somehow. I remember my dad waited out there and got that dog, pulled him back up on the porch. And we kept that dog for, I don't know, a couple years. Finally, he either got hit by a car or something, I don't know, black cocker spaniel. So anyhow, one of these, when I was, when I was about, I don't know, I was in Fairholme School, so I wasn't in junior high school yet, I came home one day and we had, we had um, linoleum on the floor. We didn't have any carpets at that time, we had just had a linoleum and uh, I don't know if we had throw rugs in the living room or not, but uh, I came home, and we had a, a we have a, had a female dog, and she had about a half a dozen puppies, and they were all inside. All these puppies were inside this wood enclosure. There was a couple pieces of wood, maybe a couple feet high, on four sides of it, with their water and her food and everything in there. And those puppies and the and the mother used to stay in there all the time. And these puppies were starting to get a little bigger. Anyhow. This mother must have took all of these puppies out of that enclosure. And then she put them all back in. And when I come home, that house was covered with dog crap from one end of the floor to the other end of the floor. That damn house was covered with dog crap. I mean, you couldn't step anywhere. There wasn't a dog pile. And, and, and well, I remember I said, I just sit down and I think I just cried or something. And I started cleaning that stuff up. And it must be took me an hour to clean that stuff up. And uh, but I was doing it because I knew they would get if my if my dad came home and say he'd probably th get throw the dogs out or my mom or somebody. So I had to get it cleaned up before they came home. See, they were for some reason they, my mom wasn't there at that time. And uh, I remember doing that. I didn't have any fun doing that. And I can remember one Christmas. This was in seven on Seven Eleven East Street. And as you went in the house, the stairs to the second floor were immediately on your left. And you went up about three stairs. The, there was kind of a, it was a, I don't know what you call it, but it was open in there and there was a, there was a banister there, flat. And we could put flowers and stuff on it. And then after that, there was a wall. And so I remember one Christmas Eve, this was on a Christmas Eve, and I must have still been pretty young because my parents were sneaking the tree in the house. Anyhow, I got out of bed and I snuck down there and sat right behind that wall and I was watching my parents. And my mom and dad is out there and they're real, being, being real quiet and they're sneaking the, sneaking the Christmas tree into the house, see? Real quiet, sneaking the Christmas tree into the house and setting everything up and setting the presents up and setting the lights up. And I'm standing behind that, that corner of that thing sitting on the stairs behind the corner of that thing watching them. <laughs> after about a half hour, I must have been there a long time, I don't know, but after a while, my dad was doing something, and all of a sudden he looked over there and he saw me. He said, what are you doing there? How long have you been there? I said, I don't know, I've been there a long time. He said, you know, I'm sneaking around here. 
I'm sneaking around here so you don't know what you think it's just Santa Claus coming out here and you're sitting there like a like a watch. He said, I'm, a, I'm like a fool over here doing this. So then I went down there and helped them put the Christmas tree up and all that kind of stuff. But I guess that was the end of them doing that kind of stuff. And around our house we always had some kind of an instrument. My mother played in the Salvation Army. She played uh, um, trumpet in the Salvation Army. And even when we were going up, she used to play. We had a, She had an old trumpet under her bed. And I used to go up and get that trumpet and try to play on it and blow it and this and that. And then as I grew up later on, then I took, took trumpet lessons. I was in a, uh, I was in an orchestra in, uh, for a while I was in an orchestra in uh, junior high, in Longfellow Orchestra. I don't know what happened there. I was doing good in the orchestra, but I just got out of it. I didn't have any interest in it. And then when I went to high school, I took trumpet lessons from somebody across town, I remember. And I used to go take these trumpet lessons every day, and I was doing real good at that, but I didn't keep it up. And my dad, my dad had always been in a band. My dad had had a band with another guy in the, in the 30s, or during the Depression sometime. I think it was Krebs. I think he called it Krebs and Day. That's what I remember. <clears throat> and anyhow, they had a big fight. Somebody burned the music up or something. Anyhow, he played clarinet and saxophone. He played uh, oboe. And sometimes, he, I remember him t talking about playing oboe with the Oberlin Orchestra, which was from Oberlin College. I remember him talking about playing, sitting in with oboe when they couldn't get somebody, when they didn't, a regular guy didn't come in with the, uh, and they played on the radio in Cleveland, it was, I think it was the Cleveland, some kind of Cleveland orchestra, whatever it was, I don't know, at that time and they played on the radio, I remember him playing oboe there, and then he always had a clarinet and a saxophone, I remember one, one time he bought a saxophone, and he always had a clarinet, wooden clarinet around the house, but I never played any of those things, all I played was trumpet, and then as I got to be a a teenager, I quit playing trumpet because I didn't really like that either. And then when I went to, when I went to, in the Navy, or maybe it was in the Merchant Marine, I can't remember. Anyhow, I remember having it in the Merchant Marine. I don't think I had it in the Navy. Somewhere along the line, I bought a, a clarinet. I had it one time, I had a clarinet and an alto sax. I remember that. Because I used to play the alto sax when I was living in New Orleans, I would go to <coughs> I would go in the laundromats and go wash my clothes in the laundromat, and then I'd play the alto sax, and I had people give me money. A lot of people threw money out the windows to me. But of course, he did that kind of thing in New Orleans, see. So oh, I did that in, in in New Orleans, different places, and I had the alto, and I used to take a clarinet sail with me, and I remember one time I took a clarinet on the uh, on the a boat I was on the lakes, it was the um, first one on the lakes in 57, right out of high school. And then I went to the Navy. And then I got up, when I got out of the Navy, I, about a year later, I come back home and I went and I worked for Fruhoff. I quit Fruhoff, I think it was about 63. Spring of 63, and then I went as a wiper on, the, uh, on this lake boat, and I remember taking my clarinet on there. And that's where I was playing in one of these rooms down in the engine room. Because this had been a tanker and it was a big, had been a big ship. They had a lot of empty spaces because they had just got done doing it. They hadn't had time to fill those spaces up with junk. And I was playing my clarinet and this guy kept hearing this and hearing this. He was an oiler and he looked all over, drove him nuts. Heard me squeaking on that clarinet sometimes and finally he opened that door and here I was in there playing. Like to make them nuts.